okay? There's a constant move of teachers and principals as well. And at Hopkins, that principal hadn't been there very long and he was moved. I don't know why he was moved, but he's no longer there and you have a new person there. When there's a change in personnel, do you see, I mean, teachers and, and the principals constantly moving from place to place? It seems like we have a mobility problem with children, but it also seems to be a mobility problem with the st teachers and the uh, principals in these schools and uh, has anything been done to look at this and why yeah. are these moves taking place? We, um, if I may, President Bonds, great great question, Director Woodward, um, because the human capital is a, is a very important question. Uh, we have some provisions in our contract uh, that allows for teacher mobility beyond what the administration thinks is right. Uh, we've tried to get that out of the contract. Uh, we've been able to have some success with the MTA on, on minimizing that, um, that part of the contract. So I think that might help a little bit. Um, but I think we do have concerns, uh, and I know a couple of the board members have actually had resolutions per pertaining to this, of stability of staff retaining high quality teachers in certain parts of the city. Uh, that is something that we're interested in working with the MTA on, on dealing with that. With regard to the principals, um, in some of these schools early on that we identified that needed improvement, we made principal changes because we thought it was the right personnel decision to do to, to put a better educational leader in a particular school. That wasn't all the cases, but in some of the cases. Um, principal stability is extremely important and we value that in the school. However, if we have an assessment, and I, I will say this on the air, that wasn't the case in Hopkins. Um, if we have an assessment that the principal is not making a difference in the school, whether we use the evaluation process or, or uh, other processes, uh, we do exercise them because the ultimate goal is to have stability. Occasionally, we will have principals come to us and ask for a transfer. Occasionally, principals will also have a promotion opportunity to go from one school that's smaller to a school that's larger, would actually they view as a promotion opportunity. So sometimes that also plays a factor in those decisions. But your point is well taken. The ultimate goal is to have both principal and staff stability. What type of efforts can you show me that has been done or made to improve the academic status in the schools? That um, you say has these low academic achievement. Yeah. What has been we done can, to improve right. that? We can, I can have, uh, President Bonds, if you may, I could have an individual uh, meeting with you uh, to actually show you that, that type of evidence. In particular, the, 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 schools in your, the schools in your area. We could do that next week when we're gonna meet. Like we can talk about that, okay? Any other comments, Dr. Uh, Dr. Smith? Just quickly, you know, I do believe the superintendent when he says that all of these schools have stories. Um, they're not all subjective uh, elements. There's a lot of objective data that can be given out to board and community when having these discussions. And I think that that's really important. We can sit here and sort of talk in general terms but that doesn't necessarily move us forward on, on things. So what I'm asking for is um, eventually getting that, that data, that objective data that would help the board begin to ferret out what should be done in these cases. The, the subjective data will come out when, when folks come out to speak on this and when questions are asked by board members. But I think we all have to start with some facts um, that go beyond just what we have here. While this is very important and it starts us along that road, there's some other data that might be useful. If I could, President Bond, just have some follow-up final comment. Mr. Superintendent. Is it okay? Okay, yeah. Um, two, two things uh, in, in kind of wrapping this up is um, that uh, the, um, what we don't want to do here, and, and, and actually this was, I, we've heard a couple of the board members actually request this over the last year or two, is that wait till the last minute. In other words, uh, I think we had this with Grand Avenue, where, where we knew the school was pretty much needed to close. Everyone knew it, the staff knew it, the parents knew it, everyone knew it, 
but it was a matter of waiting too long. So I think in some of these cases, you gotta be more proactive. This is our attempt to be proactive. Let's put it right on the table right now. Let's work with the communities. Let's interact with the, the parents. Um, but what you don't want to have happen is have a, a third Friday next year, have a school that can't even staff the school because it doesn't have the enrollment to staff the school. And then the worst thing would be at third Friday to actually have to close the school because it doesn't have the resources or staff to, to man it as a quality school. And then that's not fair to the staff, of course. They then would be out subbing because they wouldn't have a teaching assignment. And it wouldn't be fair to the children to move them then. Uh, so I think it's about one final thing. We can guarantee and, and this will be my message to you in November when we bring the schools to you that we think need to close, is we can guarantee the parents that those children will attend a higher performing school than the school they're currently attending. Okay, at this time I'm gonna pat. Uh, Dr. Oh. Bonds, I was just going to say in relation to that, you can bring forth your recommendations in November, but it's still really important for the board to understand um, the background in those recommendations. It's, it's not just what's provided here. It's, it's giving a picture, that story as you called it, of why we need to do what we need to do and whether or not that's the best alternative. Because I think when we don't do that, and, and we've seen this happen time in and time out, it becomes a very messy process. You're right, we need to, to begin thinking about that now, but I think it would be a lot easier to make these decisions if a lot of those objective elements could be laid out as early as possible. So if we had that, we can begin to prepare for those discussions rather than wait and then get pushed into a deadline on it. Um, if I, yeah. The interesting thing in talking to a couple of the principals, um, they said that they had been thinking about merging with a neighborhood school, and they said now this will give them the courage to, to have that conversation. And I think then that, that will get us into that conversation because other things could happen uh, under this scenario uh, that will make it better for the children and the staff and the community as a whole. This time I'm going to pass the gavel to Vice President Bluer because I got several comments. Uh, uh, Pres uh, President Bonds. Thank you, uh, Vice President Bluer. On page 10, just like to ask the administration to note that the MAC Center, it showed that their enrollment was um, in September 208 was 667 and it's dropped to 302. I think it should be some type of note that um, half of the students, was that school was split into two and half of the students that went to Fritchie. So if you can have some side note in there so it doesn't seem like it was just a complete drop. And then also, um, so if you can have that noted and then uh, the fact that this was moved into a new building. Uh, a second point I want to mention is, uh, is there any reason partnership schools and charter ships Charter schools weren't included on this non instrumentality charter. Ms. Superintendent? Yes, let's, uh, before I make an answer that's incorrect, we don't want to have a public statement that's incorrect, mm -hmm. let's verify uh, the statement. I don't believe there was any of those, but let's let our expert answer that question. She's got the data right in front of her. I'm just asking, is there any reason yeah. why we don't see partnership? So if, if there would have been, I believe we would have listed it, but. What, what does the data show for, for, there are a couple charter schools on here. I recognize uh, the charter yeah. that we find. Partnership schools, Ms. Sershon. Arlene Sershon, leadership analyst in the Department of Finance. Um, none of the non-instrumentality charter schools fell below the 90% threshold. Um, we did not do this analysis for the partnership schools. Um, I suppose we could have, but those contracts, some of them are by the type of contract that they have. For example, behavioral reassignment seats. Those are seats that we purchase and may not have used already in the first couple of weeks in September, but we need to have those seats available throughout the school year. Um, so th those contracts are a little um, different. The K-8 contracted programs, we have uh, three or four of those sites, uh, fairly small, none of those fell below the 90% threshold. Uh, Vice President Bluett, President Bones. Uh, I would like to see that data on the partnership schools. 
Okay, and then a, a third, uh, Vice President Wood can continue. Uh, a third thing I'd like to note, uh, Mr. Sup the superintendent stated earlier about the growth in uh, choice and charter school. That's correct. <laughs> uh, I have a map to show all the choice and charter school and to show you the impact that it's having. Um, uh, Hope Academy set up a K through eight school right in the middle of two K through eight schools. One, uh, Martin Luther King, uh, is two blocks uh, north of Martin Luther King on King Drive. It look at, uh, Hope set up a new school right on the corner of Port Washington and um, Keith Avenue, which is also two blocks south of Green Bay. So you got a situation in that area uh, where we have two K-8 schools right in the middle of a choice school, K-8, and we lose the students in that area, so that, that is a big concern. And we do have a map to show where all the uh, choice and charter schools are uh, locating at. And um, those is pretty much